I've been funded and I appreciate very much the support to do a study on zooplankton and ichthyoplankton status and trends in the Salish Sea. This program, certainly from what I've been doing, has allowed us to do more samples of zooplankton than have ever been done before. And we're finding very strong differences in timing, in kinds of animals between the north and the central or southern part of the Strait of Georgia, and between the different coast, east and west coast as well. Timing is crucial for how the food web works. So if everything stopped with the zooplankton, the timing of the zooplankton would be important for, uh, in relation to the timing of the phytoplankton, which are the small plants that float around that are the prey for the zooplankton. But the timing, whether there's a match or mismatch, of when the zooplankton, when the prey are out there in the ocean, and when the little salmon come out of the rivers, that's crucial. If the salmon match the prey, then the salmon grow, there's a lot of, of prey for them to eat, and they thrive. If for some reason the salmon come out either too early or too late relative to the seasonal production in the Strait of Georgia itself, then there's a mismatch. And that means that a lot of the fish are not going to find enough food. 40, 50 years ago there was a, an important study that looked at the timing of zooplankton and fish, but it was just at the mouth of the Fraser River. It didn't land, it was just a couple of years and it looked through the springtime. Nothing until this program has looked on the, on the Strait of Georgia wide, or in fact Salish Sea wide basis, and done it from before the spring bloom, before everything starts to grow, all the way through to the fall when most of the fish we think have left the strait. In our project, we know what, time, what kind of species occur when, and, and what the when is important. Plus we know what kinds of prey occur where. The telemetry project, allows us to tell where the fish are. So when the fish are coming out of the, out of the rivers and where they go in the strait. So then we simply match up where the fish are with where the prey is. And then we look to see whether there's a match or mismatch, whether there's the right kind of prey at the right time. If there is the wrong kind of prey at the wrong time, that tells us, or the expectation would be, that those fish are not going to grow well and therefore not survive very well. And so, two years coming, or four years coming back, depending on the species, there's going to be fewer fish. On the other hand, so we get, we get an advance warning, if you like, of the uh, potential returns or the strength of the return. On the other hand, if there's a, a match, then we can say, gee, things look really good two years down the road or four years down the road. And so it allows us to uh, give an advance warning to the managers and the fishing industry, recreational fishers, anybody that's interested, on the uh, strength of the returns in terms of numbers. It's incredibly useful for the managers at the moment and for anyone that is investing in a boat, for anyone that's investing in a, a fishing lodge. You want to know, not just next year, but several years down the road, what the potential uh, availability of fish is going to be. We've just done the first year, and I'm proud to say that we have sampled the most number of plankton samples in the Strait of Georgia for the longest time ever. There's never been a program that has sampled this many uh, samples and has got this much information. But the third important aspect is the food, what we call food quality. And that means not all of these little animals are created equal. Different kinds of plankton have different prey or food quality. And for the fish to grow, it needs to be the right kind, but also the right quality. This understanding is one, only one part of the, of the problem or one part of the, the question. The other part is what can we do and how can we make it better for us in terms of using uh, marine resources but also ensuring that the, the resources are there for my children, for my children's children, for other generations. So the sustainability of the system or the sustainable use is really important. So we're looking at the whole system right from the physics through the plankton to the fish, to the people. And that's, actually that's really hard to do and this is one of the few places with the, the uh, I think, capacity or capability to do that. So I think it's on the cutting edge of this kind of work globally. And I've done a lot of work with global research programs in the marine environment and this is really special.